Hi everyone. So this video has a, a brief discussion of uh, of one uh, case of regularization corresponding to under constrained or under determined problems. Right. So as the name suggests, uh, these problems are are really easy to solve in terms of the training data. So think in general about the learning problem. The constraints comes from the training data, right? So under constraint problems means, for example, in classification, that it's easy to distinguish between. Uh, it's easy to perfectly classify the training data, right? So then regularization really becomes crucial because it will be the dominant factor in choosing among all the possible solutions that fit the training data, right? And typically in these cases, there are a lot of examples that fit the training data, right? And that brings us to the uh, second keyword used in, in that title, which is underdetermined problems, right? And underdetermined uh, set of equations, for example, let's say I have two variables x and y and one constraint, 2x equal y. This is an underdetermined set of equation. And typically when, so in, in that case, there are actually infinite many, infinitely many uh, solutions. So for if um, it's actually un uncountable, if you uh, think of the real numbers, uh, not just integers. And uh, basically because any X uh, and Y such that two X equal Y, will will resolve, uh, will, will be a solution, right? So then in these cases, and, um, it's so uh, it's typically the case when there is uh, when the problem is under constrained or under determined that there is actually a large set of solutions that satisfy the problem. Then regularization becomes very important to choose one solution among these set of solutions. And the guideline here would be to choose the simplest solution. Remember Occam's razor uh, through an appropriate measure of complexity. Right. So uh, so one example is that uh, that I just mentioned is that when you have very few examples that are easy to perfectly uh, distinguish between in classification problems or when there are fewer examples than features, for example. So let's say I have every input example is a, is a multi dimensional features with a with a, is a multi dimensional vector with a large number of features. And, uh, and I have even fewer examples than features. But it doesn't have to be the case that I have fewer examples than features. Maybe I have a lot of examples. But these examples, right, uh, do not have, do not vary by much in a certain feature or in a certain direction, right? So think of the input as, uh, as, a, as a vector space then maybe in one direction in that vector space, right? So think of the input as a, a multi-dimensional vector in a vector space. Maybe these inputs do not vary by much in a certain direction in that vector space, right? So I can't really learn what the function should be along that direction because all the inputs, so let's say I have two dimensional inputs and all the inputs in the first dimension have the value one right? The input vectors. Then I don't really know what should happen if the input vector has a different value than one, right? So, so that can happen, that kind of problems can happen if the training examples do not, do not exhibit enough variance in certain directions or do not exhibit enough variance uh, with certain features, right? Then really the guiding principle in this case uh, to learn what the function should look like along these features or along this direction will be governed by the regularization strategy, right? So one example is if you have logistic reg regression applied to a problem where the classes are linearly separable, then in this case, I can have infinitely many uh, solutions to uh, that perfectly fit the training data, right? And uh, and in these examples, if you think of the output units, if there is a weight vector w 
that can lead or omega that can lead to perfect classification then two omega three omega any multiple of omega will also lead to perfect classification but it's typically the case that increasing the weight magnitude will result in larger discrepancy between the output units and hence the maximum likelihood principle will guide me to further to keep increasing the magnitude of the weights unless there is a regularization penalty to the cost, right? So there is a cost, an added cost, which is a regularization cost of increasing the magnitude of the weights. So for example, in the case of L2 regularization, remember when we discussed the parameter update due to L2 regularization, we said that it's as if we are shrinking the weights first by a factor of epsilon alpha, where epsilon is the learning rate and alpha is the regularization coefficient and then we do the regular update due to the gradient of the unregularized cost. Now, when that factor of epsilon alpha, right, becomes equal to the slope of the likelihood, by the slope of the likelihood, we mean the suggested parameter update due to the gradient of the unregularized cost. That's what we mean here by saying the slope of the likelihood. Right? So when the parameter update suggested by the gradient of the unregularized cost matches the weight decay coefficient, then it stops, uh, then basically uh, the, ex the um, uh, increase in the magnitude of the weight stops and training would stop in this case. But without regularization, in an example like this, I could keep increasing uh, the weights and uh, and that could be really a problem because larger weights uh, generally very large weights will uh, will lead to unstable performance or larger variance between different examples thank you